Um, hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the session on uh, when mathematics meets morality. And uh, I think I'll be following up on uh, Professor Mark's session to, uh, I think, share some practical uh, points that we might encounter when we kind of implement these uh, ideas in practice. So uh, welcome to the session. And um, uh, we'll be going for about maybe 15, 16 minutes. So a couple of minutes at the end for questions. So uh, as we will be talking about uh, bias, I thought I'll share a bit about my own uh, bias and background. Uh, the session today is uh, quite short, so uh, I will be uh, writing up a, a longer form of the session on Medium. So if those of you who use the, the platform, you can uh, connect with me there. Uh, and in terms of my, my background, um, I did uh, go back to, to school a few times to uh, pick up a few qualifications, but I'm not a professor. Uh, and I think um, I find that diversity in this area is very important. So for those of you who are interested, um, I encourage everyone to grow broad. Uh, I, I lead an uh, AI team in MSD, as well as the responsible AI function globally. I um, co-founded Loretta.io, which is an AI startup that um, implements ethical AI practices by not using biometrics and facial recognition. And also, uh, I co-authored a few chapters of Singapore's AI ethics and governance body of knowledge, which I'll be referencing a bit later in the presentation. So our roadmap for today uh, is I'll just lay out a couple of um, uh, points on where fairness sits on the spectrum of AI ethics and governance considerations. Then I think for the meat of it, I'll be sharing uh, a couple of practical challenges that we encountered when we implemented uh, these ideas in uh, in our company over the past few years. And then I'll end off with um, uh, a couple of uh, thoughts on people who want to pursue AI governance as a career. So um, I think um, we formed a team that looks at uh, AI governance around uh, four years ago. And this is our team's effort to uh, kind of map the considerations as we encountered them. And so uh, from left to right, I, will be, I won't be going through everyone, but I think we're trying to figure out um, which ones should we focus on and who is responsible um, for which area if you want to solve uh, AI governance as an issue. So uh, from left, if you work in an AI team like ours, uh, we might be focusing more on technical aspects or bias and explainability uh, up, up till product design. And the topic for today uh, is fairness, where it's really not just a technical issue, but also one that touches uh, management. And as you go to the right, you find things that are at a level of um, like uh, countries, uh, nations, or even um, on the far end of the spectrum, uh, long-term existential risk issues. I think the takeaway from this slide is really that um, there is a lot to do. And so, you know, uh, we don't want to, for instance, uh, do what we call uh, ethics washing, where we just uh, focus on one small aspect of it and say we have solved AI governance, but uh, there is a lot to do. Um, and I think uh, the crux of the issue today is that um, telling machines what we want to do is, uh, is difficult uh, because we don't, do not know how to specify our objectives uh, completely or incorrectly. So uh, like King Midas, who wanted everything to turn to gold, but not quite everything, like not his food, uh, not his family, it's very hard to say uh, what you want and specify it in a way that the machine can understand. And uh, even more complex is that what I think is right is not what you think is right. Uh, and so there is this uh, ethical conversation that also needs to take place uh, and doesn't always happen uh, in the environment we, we work in today. So we will be exploring this uh, over the next few slides. So just to, to anchor us in like a bit of a thought experiment, uh, and I believe the next speaker will be going to this in more detail. Um, in almost every uh, project or data set that we, 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 we meet, we have this, uh, like this idea of uh, maybe uh, unbalance. So as a thought experiment, imagine your role or your course has an unbalanced uh, gender distribution. And here is your boss trying to ask you to create a predictive model to um, make, make the, the system fair. And here we have uh, very different definitions of fair, uh, depending on um, uh, the way you want to define fairness. Uh, it could be, for instance, from top to bottom, a demographic parity, because just, you know, let me get the same percentage of men and women. Uh, let me be gender blind, which is meritocracy. Um, or should I try to go for something closer to equal opportunity? And um, all these are perfectly valid, but uh, contradictory uh, definitions of fairness. And um, we need to choose one of them. But often what happens is that AI systems have chosen one of them on our behalf, and we do need to untangle this. So um, <clears throat> these uh, incompatible definitions of fairness is uh, something that we want to, to look at. 
Uh, and sometimes because of these considerations and uh, ethics conversations, it's a red flag if um, a company, a firm or a product uh, solves fairness on your behalf because uh, we've not had a chance to have the ethical conversation. So where we're at is that um, doing things right is, uh, sorry, doing things is getting easier all the time, but doing the right thing is as hard as ever. And because of the nature, which is both not just technical, but also having the ethical uh, consideration, uh, it should not be left with AI teams alone. And uh, hence the, the name of this talk, because we play in this space that is both uh, technical and monolistic. Um, I'll talk on two challenges. Uh, first one is something a bit more uh, high level if you are scaling an AI system. And second is uh, a bit more granular in terms of ethical conversation itself. So um, I think one way to frame it is that when we scale an AI system, we are actually exporting this worldview and embedding decision-making capabilities onto this uh, very diverse world. So uh, from left to right, um, the left of the graphic is from MIT's The Moral Machine, where um, no surprise at all, um, different people in different parts of the world have different values. Uh, however, when you um, implement an AI system globally, we kind of uh, export this value system onto the world. And uh, part of the exporting of the value system is that definition of fairness, but also it could be something a little bit more uh, different like what I, I'm showing here. So in the middle is an example of a demographic system, which, um, uh, which is the API that I reviewed. And this was uh, the way they uh, segmented the population, Asian, Hispanic, other black and white, uh, which you know, if you were to say implement this in uh, one of the regional Asian countries would be uh, not very useful at all. And um, to kind of amplify the, the topic, uh, we also have this skewness of uh, AI governance maturity. So um, it's quite hard to see because the graphic is small, but um, the dark colors is like uh, countries who have implemented more AI guidelines. And you can see it's mostly the developed countries like the US and the EU and so on. And as, as for two years ago, uh, there was not so much um, uh, uh, like activity in Latin Africa and Southeast Asia, except for Singapore, Australia, uh, Japan. And over the, the past two years since then, we have seen uh, more coming out of uh, Africa uh, and Thailand and so on, but still there is this um, continued geographic askewness to it. So um, I think the solution to this is a, a two, a two, like uh, comes in two flavors, first short term and long term. Um, and I think uh, we need to step back and not think of fairness in isolation, but also use uh, other tools. So um, we can, for instance, implement some no-go use cases for AI based on the extent of harm, and also look at, uh, well, if we're not sure whether the system is fair, well, let's uh, put some guardrails so we have human in loop versus a purely automated decision making. Uh, and also, I, I, want, I want to just acknowledge that there is quite a capability gap in terms of um, the expertise you need to implement these things at scale and what we have today. So I think um, uh, public toolkits would help reduce uh, th these gaps as well. Uh, over the longer term, um, I think really where we'll end up with is something, um, some guidance or, or even regulation at a use case basis. So, you know, I say use case because the governance needs of um, a predictive insurance or predictive healthcare is quite different from the governance needs of, say, a self-driving car. So I believe that eventually we'll go beyond just industries and go into a use case basis. And we also need to make a distinction between internal systems, which um, data scientists train and are therefore transparent and you can op and open up versus external systems where we need to uh, certify and audit because they are not um, uh, transparent for us. Uh, and also for those of you who are thinking about product design, I think really we do need to challenge the paradigm of AI systems instead of like, let me um, build it and let me ship it to let me um, acknowledge that people in the world have different values and allow the user in context to load values into the system. Um, the second point is that um, I think uh, what happens if everything I mentioned goes right? What we have is this uh, dynamic of um, a senior leader with responsibility due to human in the loop. Um, you have evidence of bias, you have reasons for bias, all these things are transparent. And so you often have maybe a junior data scientist or data science manager having to have this conversation with a very senior uh, member of the company. So I think we also need to appreciate that uh, besides the structure, there's also this power distance uh, and therefore, uh, you can only be successful 
uh, not just with the structure, but also with uh, backing from the highest levels of the organization. And I think a great leverage point is the composition of, AI, of the AI Ethics Council in your company. Um, coming to uh, careers in AI ethics and governance, uh, I just want to make two points. Uh, the first point is that um, just as AI is crossing so many parts of our of our life, um, AI governance issues will also, also touch many different roles far beyond the AI teams. So beyond the AI teams in the concentric center, we have um, those who work in the interface, those who do uh, governance, and those who are working even at um, a national level. So. Um, uh, even if you're not an AI uh, dedicated professional, I think uh, this would be an issue that you would have to grapple with at some point in your career. For those of you who do want to do this full time, uh, I did create uh, this role, which I hired about two years ago. And it's really the uh, intersection of uh, policy, ethics and compliance, and data science slash artificial intelligence. Uh, and this was um, uh, a person I hired and a real role I, I, I created. Uh, these three are not just concepts, they are actually like three departments that we work with uh, for this person. Um, and for those of you who want to pursue it yourself, uh, I want to just share that uh, NTU has a pretty good course, which, uh, which I took. Uh, it's a certificate in AI ethics and governance, which has uh, five modules. And um, going forward, I'm also an, on an accreditation committee that is um, creating modules across, uh, like not creating, uh, accrediting modules across uh, tertiary institutions. So um, towards the uh, later this year, you would have uh, choices of modules uh, from many universities and polytechnics. So do look out for that. Um, I also want to mention that um, as for today, uh, many the, the 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 answer to our problem lies in this intersection of these many um, uh, many domain areas. And so I think we also need to bring a lot of humility uh, to this uh, particular domain um, and recognize that we may only have part of the answer. And so like the blind man and elephant, we do need to uh, collaborate uh, strongly uh, and, and um, yeah, acknowledge that the answer is not just in ourselves, but with uh, most likely with many teams coming together. Uh, in closing, and I think my last slide, uh, I mentioned that I do um, like a bit of uh, writing and this one of my favorite uh, questions, which I answered on Quora. Uh, as a data scientist, where what are career goals for the next 10 years? Um, I think, uh, um, there were quite a few students in the attending the session today, and many of you would be uh, data scientists or AI engineers who will be uh, far smarter and far more successful than I will ever be. But um, and, and I do get that you know uh, it's a growing industry, and there is a lot of um, attractiveness in working for a branded company and getting high salary and things like that. But I think uh, again to sum up the main point. Uh, our AI systems are really optimization tools that amplify the vision of the teams that build them. And I think the question we need to wrangle with is uh, not just the performance of the model and the product, but also whether we're optimizing towards the future that we want. And sometimes, you know, um, different people have different visions of the future. And that is uh, the, the essence of the fairness conversation that we need to, uh, to design and embed into our systems. So, uh, Thanks for that. I think uh, that, that that's the last slide and the end of my presentation. Uh, happy to uh, engage over the next few minutes on of QA. Thank you, Jason. Uh, that was an amazing presentation. Uh, I have a few questions from uh, um, the audience. So, first, as we were talking about just uh, careers, so do you think having career in fairness of AI is promising, given at the moment the majority of enterprise still focus on profitability? Um, so let me answer, try to answer it correctly. So you're saying that uh, is, is AI a good career because um, uh, corporations are focused on profit? Uh, fairness AI. Fairness, oh, right, yeah. So uh, that's an interesting one because I think the dynamic is, um, I think of a curve in my mind where um, uh, in the short term, uh, we will have to turn away uh, some effectiveness, some utility, uh, even some customers uh, if you embark on ethical AI. So, so to give an example, uh, in, in the startup that I mentioned, we do not use biometrics, we do not use facial recognition, and as a result, we lost some clients. However, over the long term, I do believe that we want to do not just what is uh, good, but also what is right. And I think uh, that's this notion of uh, competing on fairness and competing on ethics, which I hope will be uh, a good basis of uh, like competing in the market in the near future. But it won't be without pain, and I think uh, that's the, that's the, that's the yeah. gift cat and choice we need to make. 
another one on the same line so everyone is talking about famous ai so are we and so do you think uh, who should drive this change of uh, bringing fairness into the market yeah um i think that's really interesting uh, because it depends on who 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 this person uh, is who, who is talking because if you are a, a team with a data, if you are a data science team or a company with a data science team then you're able to train your own models you're able to put the controls put explainability in have these conversations and so I think that, you know, there is uh, one angle of mitigation there. Uh, but if you are, for, for many companies, uh, you may never have the sophistication of a full AI or data science team, and you'll be purchasing software. And I think uh, that is a danger because sometimes embedded in the software is that notion of like, they have made uh, a fairness uh, a value judgment and cannot impose it on you. And so I think for that, uh, that's a different kind of environment where the, 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 the battlefront is not so much in data science, but it's really in um, uh, auditing accreditation of the people, the systems themselves to make sure they put the right um, measures in place, or even in a design of system such that they doesn't uh, impose it uh, on us. To give a real example, um, right now, many of us are on social media and we basically get the content uh, based on what we click on. But instead of getting more of what we click on, um, I don't see many platforms actually asking me what I want to see. So that gives, that's kind of giving the control back into the user rather than um, just designing the algorithm and implementing it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have time for one more question. So uh, in what industry where fairness is main factor that needs to be solved when building an AI model? Um, so again, uh, that's very interesting. And I think um, uh, you don't want to, you want to calibrate your controls quite carefully. So you don't want to like have a, a big, uh, um, a big process and overhead for every little recommendation. For instance, if you are watching Netflix, maybe you don't want to have to audit every single <laughs> movie that they recommend you. But so you calibrate it based on the basis of harm when a prediction goes wrong. Um, so, you know, uh, for if it's advertising, um, low harm, I don't like it, I just scroll, not much harm. But if it's like um, uh, a, H a HR kind of thing where someone might lose their job, lose their promotion. If it's a medical thing, someone might lose their benefit. Um, if it's a credit thing, someone might lose their, their um, ability to get a loan. These things have a uh, great human harm. And so you should calibrate the degree of fairness overhead uh, according to the amount of human harm if something goes wrong. Yeah, and this I think differs like which organization, uh, how it handles the data. So do you think there should be like a more objective approach to fairness than subjective for different organizations? Um, I, I think uh, subjective and objective is uh, a bit uh, conceptual. I think what, yeah. it, what I was trying to bring across is that there are many equally valid definitions of fairness and what you think is right may not be what I think is right. And therefore, it's better to have that conversation, build in that conversation rather than let's choose this best best one because they may not be a best one. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. Uh, that's all the time we had today for questions. Uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us today. And now I will um, invite our next speaker, Principal Data Scientist with Quantum Black, Victoria Olyan. Over to you, Victoria. <laughs> 